give people what they want, let you know, free speech. I, I actually believe in that. I guess I just get disgusted with the um, low bar set for some. You have a national TV show, they pay you millions of dollars and um, you carry on like a butthead. I'm sorry, Dina, that's not a legal term, but he's a butthead, okay? Um, Generals will have their way with Kamala Harris. Uh, Let's give you Jesse Waters full comments. This is where the president has his most impact. You have a lot of room to maneuver there as commander in chief. We don't know who she is, we don't know what she believes. She's going to get paralyzed in the Situation Room while the generals have their way with her. Right now, Jesse, Jesse, I don't (laughs) like that. Figuratively, (laughs) again, (laughs) have their way with her. Control her, not in a sexual way. (laughs) You see, like, and then it's like the smarmy, sophomoric frat boy. Like, so he knows exactly what he said. I think he's. chosen to lack intelligence and a worldview on many issues. I think it's a choice to be this ignorant because it's just this lowest common dominator. If I just keep it here, if the bar is so low and all I have to do is tell these you know, Beavis and Butthead jokes, then I don't really have to be prepared for my, my position. And that to me is Jesse Waters. And for Judge Janine to, oh, Jesse, come on, Jesse, okay. Yeah, they're guilty of justice, but it reeks at that table of privilege and disgustiness. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the left losing their minds and calling for Jesse Waters to be fired, okay? These people are extremely upset with comments that when I first heard them, I did not think were out of bounds in any way whatsoever. In fact, my mind wasn't in the place that a lot of these people's minds apparently are in, which is the gutter. Uh, because I didn't even think that what he said was wrong. I actually thought there was a lot of substance to what Jesse Waters said when he was talking about how Kamala Harris would react in the Situation Room. Considering how she doesn't do any interviews, we don't really know that much about her. She has not shown that she can stand up to adversity. And how does that translate into foreign policy? We have multiple wars going on uh, on multiple fronts overseas. Yeah, I mean, Jesse Waters had some legitimate criticisms. But instead of dealing with the substance and the criticisms, the left does what they always do when they can't really defend uh, themselves. They just boohoo, whine, and cry bigotry. In this case, it is sexism. Jesse Waters is a misogynist because he made weird comments about Kamala Harris getting paralyzed and generals having their way with her. We don't know who she is. We don't know what she believes. She's going to get paralyzed in the Situation Room while the generals have their way with her. Right now, Jesse, Jesse, I don't (laughs) like that. Figuratively, (laughs) again, (laughs) have their way with her. Control her, not in a sexual way. This is the face of a guy who knew exactly what he was saying. Not in a sexual way, but smirks at the camera. All right. Is this what Fox News, phone news has devolved to, is making these disgusting, derogatory kind of comments? This is this is what you guys pass off as journalism. And even your co-hosts, they were sitting there telling you to kind of like stop, but at the same time laughing along with it. If you want to talk about or go after a politician's policies or maybe, you know, their leadership skills, fair game. What does this have to do with anything? And the fact that you just kind of smiled it off, this is the kind of guy that you cover your drinks with whenever he walks by, be it a bar or a Chuck E. Cheese. And this guy and his reporting, it's not reporting, it's just misogyny that's given airtime. So today is the day that I filmed that TikTok. I filmed it a few times and I didn't like what I said and I'm gonna film it again because it is more out there. Um, Jesse Waters, the um, reporter from Fox News, needs to be fired. Uh, I don't care who, what woman he was speaking of, let alone the vice president of the United States. You should not be speaking about any woman in any level of power, because she is, she is currently our vice president, so she is a woman in power. And for you to disgustingly speak of a woman in that way, that if she was able to hold, which hopefully she will, the highest power in the United States of America, which is president, that in the situation room, if there was an issue, the other men in there would take advantage of her. A, you spoke disgustingly about 
what these possible generals would do. And I, maybe in context, I, I believe he said the general. So don't come for me in that aspect. That's absolutely disgusting. What if that was your daughter, sir? What if that was your sister? You're going to talk about your sister? She's not able to handle herself in a room full of men by herself? You should be ashamed of yourself. That is absolutely abhorrently disgusting. And I don't care what woman it was, because it shouldn't matter, because women should not be talked about that way. Do you think Nikki Haley liked what you said? I happen to like Nikki Haley. I think she would have been an excellent choice for VP, and I think former President Trump made a mistake. He should have picked her, but he wouldn't pick a woman because of how he speaks about women and still speaks about women to this day. And that's why it's okay for Fox News for that person to make that, that comment. And immediately his whole panel, everyone else on that panel, especially the women, was like, take that back. That's wrong. You should not be saying that. Because if that's what he talks about on television, on national television, how does he speak behind closed doors? <laughs> Yo, I just love how these strong women get so offended by everything, right? Every chance they get, they show us just how weak they actually are, okay? The so-called strong woman in America is the weakest person on earth, right? Let's keep it all the way 100. The so-called strong woman in this country is extremely weak, okay? Weak, because that's what this is, right? This is weak sauce, right? Um... You know, is that the point now? You just can't criticize women, right? You can't say anything about women that is even remotely critical without being called a misogynist or, or sexist, okay? Especially if you are a man. But these are the same people that claim they want equal rights, okay? They want to be treated the same as men. But when they get the same type of criticisms that men get, they always seem to uh, melt down and cry, hey, sexist. A misogynist. I can't believe he said that about women. You can't say that about women. Again, all the things that they've said about Trump. Come on now. Come on. Again, these are the same people that were celebrating uh, Obama making jokes about Trump's penis size. Right? Oh, that's totally fine. That's okay. Right? And I don't think that that many people on the right were boohoo whining and cried about it. Okay, well, you know, hey, it might not have been a very classy joke, but uh, it is what it is. Right? I mean, that's the way I looked at it. I was like, okay, well, whatever. Right? Who cares? Okay? Um, but <laughs> you know, if, if you say something about Kamala Harris and you make a, a, a very, very valid point about her and how she would handle herself again, considering how she's hiding from the media. Okay. She is basically trying to get out of this debate unless she can have a massive handicap, right? She wants notes. She wants to be able to sit out. Okay. Um, she is going to do an interview on CNN, and it's with Dana Bash, a full-blown Democrat Party propagandist, with Tim Walls there, her VP, okay? So she can't do it by herself. She has to have another handicap, which is a man, to sit down with her to correct her if she says something stupid. Kamala Harris is showing us that she is the weakest presidential candidate in the history of this country. I'm so serious about that, right? That That is what I'm getting out of what Kamala is doing, and it's so obvious, right? And again... As an American, really, if, you, if you're concerned about national security, you really should be asking yourself about the way that Kamala Harris is carrying herself right now, how she's running away from adversity, and how that translates into foreign policy and protecting this country. But they don't want to do that, right? They don't want to address what Jesse Waters was actually talking about. They rather boohoo whine and cry like this. On numerous occasions how Fox News is absolute trash. And one of the most despicable individuals there is Jesse Waters. Um, this is what this uh, sexist asshole actually said yesterday. Listen to this crap. So Ben, three years since Kamala boasted about being the quote, last person in the room when Joe Biden decided to go ahead with the Afghanistan withdrawal. Jesse, uh, people consider you the, to be the last person in the room because that that's because everybody keeps trying to ditch you. Yeah, they just left. They just left. Right. But you understand the reference, <laughs> Greg. Yes. Is that she was somehow involved in the decision and it was her uh, wise guidance that he was relying upon. Listen, she was the last in the room in Afghanistan. She was the border czar and she was the deciding vote on trillions of inflationary spending. On those three most popular Joe Biden items, she's basically like a conjoined twin. You cannot yeah. separate the two. And, and let's talk about foreign policy. What is her foreign policy? And this is where the president has his most impact. 
You have a lot of room to maneuver there as mm-hmm. commander in chief. We don't know who she is. We don't know what she believes. She's going to get paralyzed in the Situation Room while the generals have their way with her. Right now, Jesse, Jesse, I don't <laughs> like that. Back. Figuratively, <laughs> again, <Take it> back. <laughs> have their way with her. Control her, not in a sexual way. <laughs> Yeah, so notice how when Jesse said this, right? And see, this is why I say these people, their minds are in the gutter, right? This is what they used to say, right? When people interpret normal things that people say in a sexual way. Because, again, you just have to be a pervert, right? You're a pervert if you interpreted Jesse's comments in any way outside of him just saying that, yeah, she showed that she's pretty weak, right? We don't know what she believes on foreign policy. And, you know, in the situation room, you know, the generals are going to have their way with her in the sense that, you know, she's not really going to be making any real decisions, right? What decision is she going to be making? She doesn't know a damn thing about Ukraine. Have you guys listened to her describe the war between Ukraine and Russia? Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. Russia is a bigger country. Russia is a powerful country. Russia decided to invade a smaller country called Ukraine. So basically that's wrong. Yeah, so not only is Kamala Harris an idiot with an elementary school understanding of foreign policy, specifically when it comes to uh, this war between Ukraine and Russia, but she was actually tasked with going over there and preventing Russia from invading Ukraine in the first place. That was her job, according to her. And what we know is that she failed miserably at that job, just like she failed miserably as borders are. But if you believe Putin has made up his mind, what leverage do you really have? Why not put those sanctions in place now? The purpose of the sanctions has always been and continues to be deterrence. But let's also recognize the unique nature of the sanctions that we have outlined. These are some of the greatest sanctions, if not the the, the strongest, that we've ever issued. As I articulated yesterday, it, it is directed at institutions, in particular financial institutions and individuals, and it will exact absolute harm for the Russian economy and their government. But if Putin has made up his mind, do you feel that this threat that has been looming is really going to deter him? Absolutely. We strongly believe. And, and remember also that the sanctions are a product not only of our perspective as the United States, but a shared perspective among our allies. And the allied relationship is such that we have agreed that the deterrence effect of these sanctions is still a meaningful one, especially because, remember also, we still sincerely hope that there is a diplomatic path out of this moment. And within the context then of the fact that that window is still opening, although open, although it is absolutely narrowing, but within the context of a diplomatic path still being open, the deterrence effect we believe has merit. Yeah, so fast forward two to three years after that war started. How has those debilitating and crippling sanctions, how have they worked out against Russia? Well, uh, they're on track to have record GDP growth. Uh, They are more dependent than ever on China. Their relationship with China is growing stronger. Uh, They're selling more oil, mainly to places like India, okay? And uh, yeah, they seem to be doing just fine, okay? Uh, It seems as if Russia isn't really being hurt that much by the crippling sanctions that, you know, apparently Kamala Harris may or may not have been involved in. I don't know. But again, she was tasked with, you know, hey, trying to prevent uh Putin from invading Ukraine and that seems to be something that she failed at okay the sanctions failed right the foreign policy failed because here we are two to three years later the war is still going on okay uh there appears to be no end in sight not that the United States wants it to end to be quite honest with you but uh Russia is not uh you know crippled right they haven't been destroyed uh due to these uh sanctions so again these are the legitimate conversations that we should be talking about in regards to Kamala Harris and, and, and what she believes, okay? Especially when, in foreign policy because the president has a lot of leeway in foreign policy, okay? More so than domestic policy. And we kind of already know where Kamala Harris is at on the for, foreign policy front, even though she hasn't really talked much about it. But when she does talk about it, uh, she uh, does not give us much confidence that she is very competent when it comes to making decisions because according to her, she was the last person in the room when Joe Biden made his disastrous decision in regards to how he would conduct the uh, withdrawal from 
Afghanistan. He just made a really big decision. Afghanistan. Yes. Were you the last person in the room? Yes. And you feel comfortable? I do. So Janine Pirro, Jesse, take it back. Dana says, Harold Ford says nothing. I'm sitting, and then at the end there, this little, oh, I didn't mean it in a sexual way, this little smile. Oh, yes, you did. And you know what? Suzanne Scott, the CEO of Fox News, won't rebuke him, won't call him out. Yeah, because it wasn't a sexual comment. I don't even think it was a sexual joke, considering how he said it with a straight face and kept going, right? He didn't pause to allow people to digest what he said. That's usually what happens, right, when you're doing something for a comedic intent, right? I don't think that was his intent. Even if it was his intent, who cares, okay? It's a joke. But regardless, um, he didn't do it for that reason, okay? You interpreted it that way because your mind is in the gutter, okay? Apparently, Roland Martin, uh, you know, has some perverted tendencies in regards to how he thinks about regular conversations. Uh, I'm surprised these people uh, haven't been boo hoo and crying about Fox News and how they have been wording uh, Kamala Harris topping Trump in the fake news polls. I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, if you want to go this route, you can literally interpret anything that somebody says as sexual in nature. But you're trying to take what this man is saying, spit it into something that's not, try to say that he's sexist and misogynist, and then call for him to be fired. Right, but you don't want to deal with the actual substance, okay? And that's the thing about these individuals that really annoy me is that they do this as a way to distract from the real conversation. They don't want to talk about the real conversation, so they distract with this nonsense. Won't admonish him. Won't take him off the air. This is the kind of stuff they encourage. Nola, here's what everybody needs to understand. And this ain't even September yet. You're going to see far more sexist, misogynistic, and yes, racist attacks on Vice President Kamala Harris the closer we get to the election. It's going to happen on Fox News. It's going to be on social. It's going to be on other conservative platforms. It is going to happen. Yes, it will happen. And I needed to take a deep breath because I am so bothered by that clip. I am bothered by the clip as a black woman in foreign policy, who knows generals, who sits at tables with them. And to portray them as if somehow they wouldn't listen to the commander in chief. You know, to, to have some sort of sexual um, innuendo and then giggle about it is also insinuating that somehow the generals will do what to her if she's the last person in the room. Well, they won't listen to her, right? That is what he said. They will overrule her, right? They will do what they want to do because she's weak. That is the point. But again, they don't want to address that. They don't want to deal with that. So they boohoo whine and cry. That's how you know the point was extremely valid, right? That's how you know. It was a very valid point because they don't want to address the actual point. They pretend that if he's saying something, he's not saying to distract from uh, the point that he was actually making. Okay, so it's problematic from the positionality of them making a joke about it, talking about her being the last person in the room, and then also making general seem like- Well, she said she, she was the last person in the room. That's just a factual statement. Like, that's not a joke, right? And apparently, this, this lady doesn't know that, right? She doesn't know that what Jesse Waters is saying is actually based off what Kamala Harris herself has said. Again, this is how ignorant these people are, right? They're so caught up in the whole racism, sexism, bigotry card, right? <laughs> Where they just completely ignore facts, right? Apparently, this lady is ignorant, completely ignorant, okay? On exactly what they were talking about. But again, they don't care about that. All they care about is the alleged bigotry, right? And they want to focus on that instead of focusing on the substance. But it, these are the same people that say, oh, why are you not talking about substance and policy? Well, anytime we talk about substance and policy, this is what you do, right? You boo hoo and cry bigotry and racism. You just don't want people to say anything negative about Kamala Harris at all. I just wish these people would stop pretending like they want to have a real conversation about policy and substance when they don't, right? They clearly don't. They are sexist and they will do some sort of harm or sexual violence to VP. That's what my ears hear as a woman. Okay, so that's the first part. Because you're weak. That's why. And you have a perverted mind, right? That's the only way that you can come away from this with that interpretation, right? You're weak, you're fragile, and you're perverted, right? And this is what these people are showing us 
uh, on a daily basis when they boohoo whine and cry about stuff like this is that, yeah, Kamala Harris is not qualified to be in office, right? She's the most fragile presidential candidate ever, right? You can't criticize her at all. You can't call her incompetent. You can't say that she's not black, even though she claims that she's an Indian woman, okay? You can't say that she will be taken advantage of or there's reason to believe she would be taken advantage of by our foreign adversaries and generals uh, in the Situation Room in foreign policy meetings because she's showing weakness in regards to dealing with diversity from the media. And these were basically the exact same criticisms of Joe Biden because of his cognitive decline. So again, these criticisms aren't unique to Kamala Harris. Uh, the person that's currently in office got these same criticisms that Kamala's getting, okay? You can't criticize her at all, right? That's what's going on here, right? This is what's happening. Okay, but again, they want to tell you this woman is strong and she's ready to lead this country. Okay, she's just as strong as any man. Okay, and she's just as qualified. And you're supposed to believe these people, even though Kamala Harris is, is, is not showing us these things, right? And um, anytime she actually gets treated like a man, these people boohoo, whine, and cry foul over her being treated the way that they claim that. They want to be treated, right? Which tells you everything you need to know about what these people actually really mean, okay? They don't want equal rights. They don't want uh, equal treatment. They want special treatment and special rights. This is what they actually really want, which for a lot of these women is to get the same benefits that men get without having the same responsibility or accountability that men have. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.